when the cold winds blow, when the mountains and the glaciers are harsh. This is the story of Bratty in Prussia. Now, those of you that are, don't come from the harsh northlands, that live in the southlands, you might take your brain to a big mill house where they have water wheels and levers and gears and such things where you grind your grain. But in the north, northlands, it is not like that. Every household must grind their own grain in a, uh, a hand grindstone of about day size. And these stones are called rockets or crushers because they crush the grain. Now, King Frodi of Denmark had a certain grindstone that was called the grind because it was of such an enormous size that it was a one-of-a-kind idol. And this crusher was so big and so magnificent, and it also had an additional power. It was a magical item as well. You did not have to pour barley corn on the top of it to get out flour. In fact, all you had to do was wish for it to come out. And in fact, you cannot get only flour out of this. All you had to do was wish for anything you would wish, and this grindstone would pour out. There was just one minor problem. The grindstone was of such immense size, nobody could turn it. Now this presented quite a quandary to King Frodo, until he heard that the King of Sweden had two slave women for sale of such enormous size and such enormous strength that surely they must be a giant blood. And it is in truth that they were, because in the mountains of uh, Sweden, where the glaciers come down and meet the rock, and no normal creature can live, they have giants and occasionally trolls. So he bought these two slave women, and he took them to work. And they ground at this grindstone. And they turned it, and they ground, and they ground. But they did not grind flour, for no, that was more than what King Freddy, less than what King Freddy wanted. He wanted more. He had them grind out gold and prosperity for his kingdom. So they ground, and they ground. From the time the sun rose in the east, the time the sun set in the west, they ground. Now in the Northlands, during the summer especially, this is a very long time. And so as the sun set, they were very weary of this very cumbersome toil. So they asked King Frodo, may we please be allowed to sleep until the sun rises again, and then we shall renew our labors. But King Frodo, upon seeing the huge pile of gold that he got, became even more greedy. And he bade them nay to grind throughout the night, and the only rest they should get is between the calling of the cuckoo bird. And now the cuckoo bird calls thus, cuckoo, cuckoo. And the only rest he would get would be between that space of those call. Now any normal person would be very angry at this. And indeed, these two giant women became very angry at this. So after Brody and all of his men fell asleep, and they did continue to grind as they were made, for they were slave women and they had no other choice. But they did not grind gold. They ground out an army to cut crush King Frodi and all of his kingdom. And they turned that grindstone. And they turned it and they ground and they ground and they ground throughout the long hours of the night. And when Frodi awoke in the morning and stepped out of his hall and looked up, expecting to see a beautiful sunrise on the ocean, what he saw instead was this. And as far as he could see to his left, as far as you can see to the right on the horizon, ship, Viking ship, the host of King Mycenae, the most feared Viking sea king that there was. And the ships poured down on the beach, and the waves crashed down on the beach with the ships, and waves of Viking warriors came out of the ships, and they had swords, and they had shields, and they had axes, and they did crush the entire land beneath them, and they took plunder. And they burned the kingdom to the ground. And of the plunder they took was the crusher, Grati, and the two slave women that went with And they loaded them up into Mycenae's very own Viking ship. A hundred feet long it was from stem to stern. And he put them in the hold of the ship, and they sailed off. And he bade them to grind gold for him. And they asked him, as they had asked King Brody, please, it is... Now nightfall and it's getting dark. Let us rest until the morning and we shall grind out all the gold that you could ever want. Now Mycenae, being a Viking king, was no less greedy than Frodo. And so he did bade them to grind throughout the night. And so when all the Vikings went to sleep, this time the two slave women ground salt. And as they sat there grinding, they sang this song, this spell. And they said, we shall grind salt 
Salt for our sweat of our toil. Salt for the tears of our misery. Salt. Salt. And they ground. And the salt was pouring up out of the grindstone. And it filled the entire hole of the ship. And they still sat there grinding, turning, laboring at this huge grindstone, singing their song. Salt for the salt of, salt of our toil. Salt for the sweat of our tears. Salt. Salt. And the ship began to sink lower and lower into the waves. And the water crashed higher and higher on the side of the ship. Finally, the waves began crashing over the sides of the ship. And then the Vikings on board began to awake and notice something was wrong, but it was too late at that point. The ship began going down, and still the slave women ground and ground. And the ship began to sink. And this huge whirlpool opened up from the water pouring into the top of the grindstone. And it swallowed not just King Mycenae's ship, but the whirlpool swallowed all the other ships in the Viking fleet. And they were all sucked into the bottom. And this story is true. And I swear to it, absolutely. And there are two ways in which you can test this story. You may go to Sweden and you may sail along the seas there between Sweden and Denmark. And you might still see the world school there to this day. Now, if you do not have the wish to go to Sweden and go sailing about, and especially near whirlpools, where that is somewhat dangerous, you may not make it back alive. The second way you can test the truth of the story is just go to the nearest seashore, dip your finger in the water, and taste it. And you'll taste the salt there. 